Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. Uh, this is a call for video and it is on partial fractions, the second video uh, I've done on this. We're going to introduce a, a technique called the substitution method which I'm going to use when dealing with partial fractions in the coming videos. As always, for more help with your studies, do check out the YouTube channel, Twitter or Google+. Now, it, this is the second video and we're doing the substitution method. This is applicable to the Edexcel syllabus but should work for most other courses. And in Edexcel we're not really going to touch upon any of the actual uh, syllabus just yet. We're learning a technique that's going to help us for the next video. This is the substitution method. Imagine I was uh, given the following and I was asked to find A and B given that the following is true. Now you should know from your GCSE knowledge that this here is the sign for an identity. When you see three lines like that, it's a sign for an identity. Now an identity is something that is true on both sides no matter what value of the variable x I use. So it doesn't matter what x I choose, these two things must be equal to each other. The difference with that in an equation for example, if 2x plus 1 is equal to 11, there is only one x value that satisfies this, namely 5. I can't just stick any x in and it's going to work. So that's not an identity. But here, if I substitute any x value at all, uh, a real number, both sides will still remain exactly the same. So that's what an identity is about. So if I'm trying to find a and b, I can actually choose nice values of, a, of x, okay, uh, and substitute them into both sides to find a and b, to make finding a and b as simple as possible. So, what values of x might I choose? Well, imagine if I let x equal negative 4. This side here would be 10, negative 4 plus 14 would be 10, this side here, well, it would be a uh, and times negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So it would be a multiplied by 0 plus b multiplied by negative 5. And we get the equation 10 is identical. 0 times a is 0, and we get negative 5b. And therefore, b, we can determine, must be negative 2. 10 divided by negative 5. Okay, and we found B. And alternatively, we could let X equal 1. If we did that, the right hand side I would have 15, and it would be identical to uh, A multiplied by 5 and B multiplied by 0 because 1 subtract 1, 0. So I would have 15 is identical to 5A. So therefore, I could determine that a is equal to 3 divided by 5. And I could state that a is equal to 3 and b is equal to uh, negative 2. OK, and that is the substitution method. Let's try with one slightly more complicated example. Here we go. Find a and b given the following, uh, the left hand side uh, as shown is identical to the right hand side. Now let's think of uh, x values that might help us. Well, I can't think of any x, uh, a real number, that would make this side 0. So what I might do is, I, usually x is 0 is a handy substitution. Let x be 0. This side would then become 1, would be identical to uh, a times 2 it would be, so 2a, plus if this here, if that was 0, that was 0, then I'd just have 1, so I'd have plus b, right? Okay, what else could I do? Well, I could, um, let's say I, I have to pick another x value. I could choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, anything. Why don't I just choose um, x is negative 1, let's say. Now, this here would still be 5. Take away 3 would be 2, plus 1 would be 3. And this would be identical. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus 2 is 3, so I'd have 3a. And over here, I would have 
negative 1 squared is, is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, take away 1 is 1, add 1 is 2, so I'd have plus 2b. Okay, and I have two simultaneous equations that need solving uh, to find a and b. So if I call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2, if I multiplied equation 1 by 2 and kept this equation at the same, so just multiply it by 1, I would get 2 is identical to 4a plus 2b. And I would get here, as I had before, 3 is identical to 3a plus 2b. I could call that equation 3 and 4. If I took equation 3 and subtracted equation 4 from it, so I'm going to take these away. 2 take away 3 is negative 1. Um, 3a take away, uh, sorry, 4a take away 3a is just 1a, and these would disappear. So a is negative 1, and substituting back in here, therefore, uh, let's substitute back into, let's say, this one here. I would have 1 is equal to negative 2 plus b, so therefore b must be equal to 3. So I have found that a is equal to negative 1 and b is equal to 3. And I have found that a and that b as I was required. Okay, so um, that's uh, it for now. They're the two examples and this technique we're going to use in the partial fractions chapter. Um, your turn now. Um, pause the video. Take a few minutes to work out the values of a, b and c in these identities using the substitution method. And I will show you the answers in 10 seconds. And the values of A, B and C are as follows. So just tick off your work there and double check you could get the answers for each of these. And uh, just for a bit of extra homework, do read chapter 1, page 3, and just read through example 2 so you are ready for the next video where we finally answer some partial fractions questions. Thank you very much for watching.